Great. Hey, thank you, Jessica. And um, thank you, Dennis, as well. Um, and uh, we're excited today to uh, go over a lot of what's been happening out there with uh, shade taking and recently with uh, COVID. I know that's been a challenge, especially for us here at the laboratory with all the safety uh, precautions that we're taking uh, to keep our employees safe and uh, to keep the work environment safe uh, so that we can uh, deliver restorations to, to our uh, clients. And uh, so the, the biggest challenge, of course, has been with uh, patients visiting the lab. And uh, one of the neat things that you'll see today uh, from Dennis and Shadewave is a way that we can overcome that challenge um, with an app he's developed. And uh, Dennis, I've known for, for many years, probably 15 plus years. And uh, he's the, the founder of Dental Learning Centers and Shadewave. Um, Dennis most recently patented and developed shade communication software and integrated mobile photography app. Um, he has been in the dental technology since 1990 and is recogni recognized as one of the early pioneers and experts in digital photography, cosmetic imaging, and case presentation in dentistry. He has been a provider of continuing education since 2001. Um, Dennis is a developer of image-centric dental software camera shade devices, and several dental cameras. He has lectured at numerous locations around the world. Dennis has several published articles in the Journal of Dental Technology and uh, Contemporary Aesthetics. And it's my pleasure to introduce Dennis Bronston today. And uh, we're very excited about what he has and how this can help us uh, with not only getting better shades uh, for the laboratories, but also uh, taking care and satisfying our doctors and patients' needs. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Dennis Bronston. Thank you. Thank you very much, Damon. It, so the first thing I want to mention is thank you very much, uh, DSG, and everything that you've done to put this together. Um, I do have a financial interest in some of the products being discussed today, one of which is Shadewave. And Shadewave is shade determination software, and it uses photography with, a, with shade tabs in the photo uh, used as a reference that are color corrected, and then uh, shade maps are produced, and it's all web-based. And the other item is Shadewave Mobile. It's, uh, it's new, we're very, very excited about it, and it automates and optimizes the iPhone camera. Um, it doesn't work on Android. What we're going to discuss today would be first dental photography and the paradigm shift. There is an absolute change in the cameras and the way that we're doing dental photography. So we're gonna discuss that. Also, this is very important and that is the requirements and standards. What photos do we make, do we want you to make uh, to communicate to the lab from the dentist, from you? Uh, to the lab. And third, we're going to discuss mobile phone photography. And then last, automated shade determination. So it was about a year and a half, two years ago, uh, flew from Seattle to the southeast, uh, went to Savannah for a few days, but then we visited, or I visited, about five or six different dental labs. And as I said before, we're into photography and photography analysis. So at each lab, um, as I went, you know, we looked at their photos. Well, let me share with you, by the time I got to the sixth, the last lab, and we were done, I was absolutely floored. And I was floored because so many of the photos were just, they, they weren't good. They were not clinically useful. About 50% of the photos. I thought that's crazy. Secondly, we noticed more and more photos are being done through mobile photography. Uh, that's a real organic shift. And I'd say maybe 30, 35% uh, in one study we did, uh, dentists are now using mobile photography because they want to. You know, we, I, we all get it. That's what people want to do. But unfortunately, 80 to 90% of those photos were simply not useful. And I said, how could that be? How could it be? Because we all know mobile cameras are getting better and better. 
So how could it be that the photos aren't good? So we're going to explore that and also what are some of the solutions so that you could make excellent photography with mobile photography. So that's what we're going to discuss. You know, the dental lab is only as good as the photos they receive. I mean, let's face it. If the information is not there, and we're going to be doing more and more photo documentation, because as Damon said, uh, more and more of the dental labs don't want your patients to go to the lab. The patient doesn't want to go to the lab, and you, the doctor, should, should also want that as well for the custom shades. So we're going to rely more and more on good photos, and that's what's really important, and I hope that I can show you today ways that we can automate and make photos really, really good. Now, I realize some of you are excellent at dental photography already, and that's great, but some of you want easier ways, you know, to make really, really good photos, okay? So I asked the question, why? Why are the photos, some, some of them, why are they not so good? What is it? Well, I'm not sure I have all the answers, and I don't, but I have some ideas. Let's first look at the camera systems that are out there. So this is a digital SLR. It has a twin flash, as you see, or a ring flash. It has a macro lens, and then the camera body. And the camera bodies, mostly Nikon and Canon, are very sophisticated. They have lots of buttons on them, menus. Uh, you can go to safaris with them and do dental photography. So they're quite versatile. And this is really the standard of what's out there in photography. But a lot of dental um, professionals said, you know, I don't want to use this camera because it's too much for me. I want something simpler for my staff and I. And that's why we have the point and shoot cameras as you, as you see here. Now, a lot of them have been modified over the years and dentists have purchased them. And so there's a lot of them out there. So these are the point and shoot cameras and they don't make quite as good photos as the SLR, but there's a lot of them out there and they take good photos. So what's the third category? The third category is mobile photography. Now, four years ago, if you said, or if you asked me what camera systems are there that can be used, I would say that the mobile phones cannot be used. And many people say that even today, but they have gotten a lot better. And I'll show you uh, some of the understanding of how we can make photos really, really good from the, uh, from the mobile phones. So this is our three categories. Well, or is it? because something is happening out there. And that is that the point and shoot camera or the compact camera is going away. It's going extinct. Think about it. If you're out and about uh, in a restaurant or a sporting event, wherever, and you, what do you reach for? Well, it's not your point and shoot camera anymore. So they're going away. Why are they going away? Well, many of you would guess why they're going away. Because people aren't buying them anymore. Let's take a look at this chart. The blue is our traditional cameras over the years. Actually, it starts in 1951. But around 07, uh, 09, in those years, the blue, the blue part of the graph, those are traditional digital camera sales. And look how quickly they've gone away. You can see that today, they're almost all gone. In fact, people are hardly buying point and shoot cameras. People still buy the SLRs, that's, that's a good market for that. But camera sales are going really down for companies like Canon and, uh, uh, Canon and Nikon. So what's increased? Everybody knows this. Look at the smartphones, okay? That's what people are using. That's what people want to use outside the world and also inside of dentistry. So let's look at the SLR camera, that's the standard. And I'm just showing you all the different settings, white balance, you know, shutter speed, aperture, uh, one, for, one for portrait, one for intraoral, ISO, all these different settings. Okay, so 
you can set it just the way you want it. But also, if you kind of don't know or you make a mistake, then maybe your, your camera doesn't work so well for the kind of photography that you want to do, which is dental photography. So don't get me wrong that a lot of people or certainly a number of, of people love their SLR cameras. They're very, very good at it and they take excellent, excellent photos. But many of us, including myself, think they're too big, bulky and heavy. You know, they have very complex setting, lots of knobs and buttons and menus as, as we showed you as a, it can do a lot of things. So for me, as you can see, you know, I wear glasses and I teach dental photography for many years. And, you know, I have to squint or you have to squint with one eye, not two, okay, through a little hole. And for me wearing glasses, it even puts my eye back farther so it even crops the photo even more. So it's just not an easy thing to do and it weighs four or five pounds. And to some patients, it's like, what's this big thing in front of me? And here's the big question, especially in today's environment. How do you sanitize it? You know, can you, can you put it in a sterilizer? Well, I'm going to surprise you. You can put a digital SLR in a sanitizer, okay, in an autoclave, but only once. All right, being silly. You can't put it in an autoclave. And also, if the patient says, or you say, hey, how do we sterilize this thing? You know, I, you can't really, or, or not do a good job. You can't spray it down, et cetera, because of all the knobs and buttons and so forth. How about a mobile camera? Uh, yeah, a mobile phone, you can. It, this one has glass on the front. It's all sealed in the back, and the cover you can sanitize. So this is great. You can sanitize uh, your mobile phone. So that's a good thing. I mentioned we are able to get good photos out of the mobile phone, but let's look at why were so many of the photos that we saw, you know, not clinically um, good. They, they just simply weren't good enough. There's no information in them. Well, it's not obvious where to find the settings because they don't have as many knobs and buttons, so it's hard to find the settings. Oftentimes we find the flash is off. Now, some of you may think, well, yeah, you're supposed to put the flash off, but that's not the case. You need to have enough light from a light or a flash, or you don't uh, have, you can't distinguish the colors, simple as that. Magnification, zoom, oftentimes that's not done, that's not correct. And then oftentimes it's emailed at very low resolution. So when the receiver gets it, there's no information there. And that's a choice when you email. And we all know also that's not usually HIPAA compliant. And the exposure. In dental photography, we wanna lower the exposure slightly. And so oftentimes the exposure isn't correct. Other, other settings are also are hidden or can't be easily set. And finally, at least in the iPhone, the settings are not saved. So even if you have manually all the right settings, every single time you have to go through all that process to get it right. And you can make good photos, but you have to do all of those things. We need a camera system that automates optimal settings, something with fewer options, the better. I have found when you give lots of options, you have lots of opportunity for mistakes. And that's why maybe make a system where everything is set up automatically and you can't make the changes. So let's look at the photos that the dental labs receive. This is important. I put them in three categories. I put them in very, very good ones, ones that are not clinically useful and ones that are fixable. Let's look at the ones that are good. And these are wonderful photos. This is with a digital SLR camera, a Canon camera with, with a ring flash on it. And it's a beautiful, wonderful photo. The magnification is just right. Uh, if you look closely, you can see the, the calcification, the character of the tooth. I can see, or you can see all the translucency on the distal here and all the cracks and crazes. And with the lighting, you can see the texture, the shade tabs look great. It's just a great, picture 
And again, I mentioned SLRs can take uh, very, just great pictures. Well, look at this one. This is also a very, very good photo. And this is with Shadewave Mobile and an iPhone. And I look at this and it's wonderful. I mean, you can see, uh, you can see the translucency again, all the character, the line angles here, so they can get the shape just right. You know, it's just a great photo. Shade tabs look good, okay? And here's another photo, again, with Shadewave Mobile and the iPhone. It's another very, very good photo. You can see all the character of the tooth, shade taps, it's great. Same thing here. Uh, I can see some lobes in here, it's translucency, all the cracks and so forth. Again, with Shadewave Mobile and the iPhone. So absolutely, if done correctly, okay, you can make really, really good photos. And some of you may be curious about the lighting, and that is, I don't know how it does it, frankly, and I didn't expect it, but the iPhone onboard lighting, if you adjust it just right, makes wonderful photos, and you know, and sometimes better than a ring flash. Ring flashes that are in the front of the SLR uh, camera, they sometimes put too much highlights um, on the tooth, too, uh, too much glare. So what about the photos they receive maybe that aren't so good? Let's take a, just a quick look. So this is with a mobile phone. It wasn't adjusted correctly. I mean, it has a dental light on the teeth, but we really can't use it for shade. This photo was emailed at a very, very low resolution, uh, somewhat blurry, and obviously it has too much information as far as uh, it needs to be more magnified on the teeth, so that's not usable. Uh, now this one is with a Canon G16 point and shoot camera, a very good camera. Okay, a point shoot camera, but they didn't turn the flash on. You know, how can the lab make a restoration or something from this and they can't. And they finally, they turned the light on with the overhead light, uh, but still it's not usable. This picture came in sideways. Okay, and here's another photo that wasn't zoomed in. And this is called geometric distortion uh, that you get when you don't zoom in it. I gotta say, you know, I kept looking at this and I said, you know, it kind of reminds me of something. And I said, what does this kind of remind me of? And I said, I know it's a proboscis monkey. All right, so I digress, I apologize, but sometimes we have to laugh a little bit. I'm sure I'll get chastised for this later. Okay, so let's move on. So I do ask the lab professionals, I say, okay, there you are, you have these photos, the ones that are not clinically usable. I said, what do you do? And I hear a lot of silence. And sometimes I hear, well, uh, we call the doctor and tell him to remake the photo, call the patient back in. And I said, well, you're brave. Uh, you know, a lot of times you don't want to do that, right? Docs, you know, um, so what do they do? Well, they sometimes guess, they say. Sometimes they look at the script, whatever says on the script, they make it that way, you know, but sometimes there's just no good answer. So when they get a photo that isn't usable, so they dump it and they do one of those things that we talked about. Here's a category I made up called ones that are fixable. Now, what does that mean? Now, these are photos that are good, but in this case, for example, the color is way off. It's way too red. So sometimes the photos are too red or too blue or too dark, too light. And later we're gonna show you through our demo how even with photos that are bad color or bad, or the exposure isn't right, how easily that we can fix it and get the shades in seconds um, with our shade wave program. Let's look at guidelines for lab photos. And again, I think this is really important. You need to make photos uh, with the tooth to be matched. Don't take a photo of temporaries or open missing spaces without teeth. You just need to think, and uh, you wanna make sure you take a photo of the correct tooth. Secondly, the photos need to take a shade tab. There needs to be a reference in there, just not a picture of the teeth or the stump shade. A shade tab needs to be in there and take a picture of it with the name showing, uh, that's important. Now for Shadewave, 
Shade Wave it, it uses the shade tabs as a reference, so it does not have to match the two. Okay, so it's different. Now, this one is varying pitch. That's like, like this, like up and down. I'll show you here in a moment. Varying the pitch is okay, uh, but not right to left if you're going to just to make one photo. So let me show you what I'm referring to. So this would be varying the pitch. So the middle one here, that's called normal. And you just shoot that photo straight on, especially for a single central. Uh, these photos are really important for more than one photo. Photos that you, sh you take straight on, it shows more texture and line angles uh, and more glare, but that's okay. When you raise the camera up higher, like the photo up above, that's in the superior angle, if you will, then that's better for shade taking and the one down at the bottom. So the top and the bottom at those angles, uh, there won't be glare on the tooth itself. So it's better for shade. And the one in the middle is good for seeing texture. This is called yaw. And that would be if you just make one photo and it's like this. Now I know that's not a tooth and you know that, but I'm just showing you by example, the angle. So if you just provided one photo like this, it's, it's missing information. You need to be sure you shoot it straight on. Now, again, if it's a single central, then you do all of it, varying the pitch, and you can take a photo of the tooth to the left and the right, and your technician is going to love it. They have all the information to do a great job for you. Next item is file size, one megabyte or greater. That's not a problem. All your cameras will do that unless you take it with a mobile phone and you email it under the lowest resolution, but it needs to be one megabyte or greater. What about content? Okay, I know that some of you can make photos with two teeth. You don't want that. And you don't want photos of a half of a face, about six to 10 teeth. So that's what you're looking for as far as content. And you must use a flash or a light, or you simply cannot determine all the colors. Uh, so you need a flash or an attached light. We want limited glare or highlights in the middle of the shade tab. If there's a big glare in the middle of the shade tab, you can't see the color. It can't really be used. Uh, all glare comes out white. So we need to look at the photos later and make sure that there's not too much glare in the middle of the shade tab. We'll show you a couple techniques in a moment how to limit that. And then last, clinical quality. And this is kind of subjective, but photos showing characterization, texture, translucency, and other aesthetics. That's why photography is important to transfer all of that vital information so that your lab can te technician, again, can build it all in. A quick summary, six to 10 teeth, and get the, the quality aspects there. That's what you need to look for. So what photos do we take? Well, I know that some of you go to different seminars and some people say, take 10 photos, 15 photos, all these different angles and so forth. And that's great. But for our purpose, here's what we're recommending. One is full face. Why would you take a full face photo and send that to your lab? Well, there's a few reasons. And some of you are out there thinking, oh, I know the answer. It's for head shape. How much are they smiling? What do they show? And so forth. And that's true. But there's another reason. And that is, if you're working on the bench and you're a technician, it, it's nice if there would be an emotional connection between what you're doing, your life's work, and who it's going to be for. So there's this emotional connection. And I think that's really important. So go ahead and, and do a full face photo. Um, don't worry about HIPAA. The dental lab is your agent and it's okay to do that. So make a full face photo. And then secondly, as we've been saying, take a, take a photo straight onto the tooth you wanna match. Make sure the shade tabs are in there just like this, okay? And then 
Last, uh, the stump shade. And especially for those materials like Emacs or any uh, translucent material, we wanna have the stump shades, really important. And then raising the dental chair when you're making that photo. But those are the photos that you want to do. There's one more thing, one more photo I want you to think about, and it's rarely done. So what would that be? That would be make a photo of the completed case, like what's on the right, and put the shade tabs in there. Hopefully it looks great, okay? But no matter what, make a photo of it. Well, it's good for photo documentation for sure, okay? But also, think about this. You see the completed cases all the time. Go to the next operatory. Your lab professionals rarely, if ever, see the completed case. So I'm suggesting you, t you make pictures of the completed case, like this one, or actually have yeah, the patient open a little bit would, would be better. And then if it's a complicated case, get your technician to join in with you. It's a team effort, absolutely. And you can talk about what do you like? What do you don't like? Oh, I should have put a little more texture here. Or the shape isn't quite right. Oh, I could have added a little more translucency. But this is the way to make things better and really do teamwork uh, to do that. So that's my suggestion. And if it comes out great like this one, docs, hey, share those cases or, or even email them you know, back to the technician and say, hey, you know, I think you wanted to see the completed case. Great job. Okay, so we have available for you our shade taking photo checklist. And, and Jessica will get that to all of you. And these are just some of the things we have in there. I think it's a very, very valuable document. It's just two pages. The first item is reduce glare. That's like highlights in the middle of the shade tab. We just we have to eliminate that or reduce that. So one way to do that, for those of you that have big windows, you draw the blinds. If you can't draw the blinds, turn the chair away from the big window because the light comes in and you can see big squares on the shade tabs or teeth. That's a big one, uh, draw the blinds. Secondly, raise the dental chair as high as it'll go. It may seem a little unusual to you, but do this. If you leave the chair down low and the chair, the back of the chair back, oftentimes light from the overhead lights oftentimes creates glare on the shade tabs. The photo isn't any good. So raise the dental chair to your height, size it'll go, and shoot just straight on. We've already discussed this. Know what tooth to match. You know, just sometimes we don't think, it's so simple, but then we do the wrong tooth. And last, this is important to you. Look at the photos before the patient leaves. Look at the shade tabs in there, if it's blurry or it's wrong or whatever, just retake them right then and there and you'll be much happier for it. Let's look at the traditional way that we, uh, we do shade communication. And this is assuming it's done at a dental office, photos, are done at a dental office and then uh, sent to the dental lab. So what do we do? Well, we choose the correct shade tab. Sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't, but that's what you wanna try. And then with a traditional camera, then you, you, you take, you make the photo. There's a lot of steps here. You stop, take the memory card out, upload it, put it into a folder, whatever you do with it. And then next, you email it perhaps to the lab. And again, you know, questioning, is it really HIPAA compliant? You know, does it have the patient information in there? But that's what we're doing. Okay, so this is just traditionally what we do. And then it gets to the dental lab. Of course, they're saying, is it the right shade tab? Yes or no. But also, even if it is the right shade tab, teeth are not monochromatic, are they? Or many teeth are not monochromatic. They have to figure out all the different colors and shades and translucency and value, et cetera, from one single shade tab. I don't know how they do it, you know, but people are very well trained and they can do it, but it's just not easy. And it takes a lot of time, especially if the color's bad, et cetera. 
And then obviously they make the restoration. So this is just the traditional way that we do things. But let's look at a different way to do business. And that's with ShadeWave. ShadeWave is shade software. It's all web-based. It connects the dentist with a dental lab all through the cloud is secure. And it's a little bit different. What are you used to doing? You take your shade guide out, you put it in front, you pick the right shade tab or two, you make your photos. With ShadeWave, because it uses shade tabs as a reference, it doesn't matter if the shade tabs match the tooth or not. Your shade guide could be an A2 or an A2 and a D3, put your whole shade guide away or sell it on eBay. Of course, you won't get much for it, you know, simply because uh, it's missing the A2 and the D3. Anyway, you take the photo. So let's assume we're using the iPhone, okay? And there's direct transfer. So right when the photos are done, then it's you hit upload. The photos go directly to your account and the lab instantly. Even before the patient leaves the chair, your dental lab is going to have uh, the photo. So that's really cool. So now they have the photo, okay? And with three mouse clicks, three to five mouse clicks, boom. They get all the information. They get shade, they get uh, translucency, value, you know, they get it all, and then they make the restoration. So here's an example. Here's the photo that's, you know, a bit too red. Here to the right, it's color corrected, and then you see the shade map. Let's discuss uh, ShadeWave Mobile. The first thing is, as mentioned before, ShadeWave Mobile is an app that you can download at the Apple Store. So I wanted to mention that, you know, what, what models are used. Uh, it'd be the iPhone 8 or newer. Now, when Apple came out with the iPhone 8, it really improved the camera dramatically. The older uh, cameras do work, or the older phones do work, the iPhone 7 and 6, but the cameras just aren't that good. So we're saying the iPhone 8 or newer, and those phones or those cameras that have two cameras, like the 10, the 10s, and the 11, those are the best ones. So there's three different shooting modes. The one at the bottom is, uh, it defaults there, that's for shade taking, that's the one at the left. The one in the middle, you push that one for portrait, and then the ones for inch rural, the far right. This is more than a shade taking app, is for all of your photos. So this could be your new dental camera. So here's an example of photos taken with the iPhone 10. You've got natural smile, uh, retracted anterior, upper lower occlusal, the lighting is even, uh, buckle corridor, it might be a little dark in the corners here, uh, but it, you could do all your photos, including shade taking. What does the app do? Well, the app is software that takes control of the iPhone camera. So you don't have to do a thing. You just put the patient name in, turn it on. It sets the exact zoom you need. It sets the flash. And again, you do not need any external light. It sets it at the right uh, intensity. It sets the exposure just right, slightly underexposed. It allows you to white balance or color correct. It's the one thing that you need to do. This is done in your operatory. It, it calibrates your camera to the environment, the lighting environment in your operatory. It sets the aperture for the best depth of field from the phone. And it sets the iOS for the best clarity. So those are the all presets, including the, uh, the flashlight comes on. So you can literally turn your lights out in the operatory if you're getting too much glare and it still will make an excellent photo. So let's go through the process. If you look at the one on the left, you raise the dental chair as high as it'll go, you make the back forward just like this. Okay, simple as that. And again, if there's a big window, you might wanna turn the dental chair. Number two, you get your two shade tabs, say an A2 and a D3. We didn't discuss this before. This is called a shade tab holder, we used to call it a reference. It's an optional item, but it's really cool. So it holds your shade tabs, has little windows in there, so you can see the names of the shade tabs. And then the photographer gets about four and a half inches away, 
and makes the picture. So I want to just show you a little video of how it works. We have another little video and we do use voice commands. So let's, uh, to make the picture. So let's see how that works. Open, raise your lip, snap. Snap. Upload. Okay, so upload and you get it right to the lab. So we're getting close to our last slide. And I, I wanted to include this because I think it's something special. So um, this doctor, uh, the one that took both photos actually, but he's had a Fuji S2 Pro uh, for what, 50, 17 years. That's really considered maybe one of the best dental cameras that's ever come out, digital SLR cameras, the Fuji S2 Pro. And one of these photos is with an iPhone. I don't know if you can guess which is which. I'll show you. So the one on the left is with the Fuji and the one on the right is with the iPhone. Now, they both are certainly good enough to, to do you know, what the lab needs to, uh, needs to get done. But what I wanted to show you, show you, what I was curious about is if we map, if we get the map uh, from each one of these, does it look different or is it the same? Because the camera systems are definitely different, aren't they? Well, let's take a look at the mapping. And this kind of blew me away. I got to tell you, I, I love this. So the one on the left is with the Fuji S2 Pro and the one on the right is with the iPhone. And they're virtually identical. And so that just shows you that the science works of putting the, the shade tab in the photo, having it color corrected, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go ahead and just do a, a, a quick demo just so I can show you what the lab does. So say, uh, again, it's all web-based and they, they click on lookup case. Then an email comes from you, the dentist, without the patient's name, goes to the lab, it tells them that they have a case, they look it up, and here it is. And then they look at it and they have all the different shade guides here. But it's absolutely simple, very, very simple to do. And they just click on uh, one button and it turns the cursor into that red box. You simply click on the shade tab and we can see that's an A2. I don't know, is that gonna match or not? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so they tell the program indeed it's an A2, that's simple. And then when we click on this other button, it's going to turn that A2 into our standard E2, our mathematically correct E2. And by doing that, it color corrects the entire image just like this. So that's the, the color corrected image. And now you go, wow, that other photo was too red. The skin tones look great. Uh, you know, lips look great. The, the tooth color, that's what I perceive an A2 should look like. So we went again from that, and many of you maybe didn't even notice uh, that it was really, really off. So mathematically, the shade tab gets color corrected, but how do we get the shade from the, uh, or the information from the tooth? Well, there's this region that pops up on the screen, and, and then they just, you just size the region, maybe a little bit larger than the tooth, all right? And which I'm doing right now. There, there you go. And there's a green box in here. And some of you say, okay, there's a green box. So what, what is the green box? Well, the green box is going to give the dental lab something they've never had before. And that is value. If they nail the value, uh, which is the 3D master value group, some of you know about this, uh, zero through five, even if they're off on color a little bit, then for sure, more than likely, it's, it's going to see. The degree of brightness 
is more important than shame. We hear that a lot, don't we? That value is more important than shame. Let's get the shades. Okay, and we're about to conclude here just in a minute, but boom, there you go. Uh, you have all the shades in the Vita Classic, all the translucency, extra light, light, medium, and dark. It's on the right. We have the original picture here. Now the lab can actually change shade guides. So for example, what if we're an implant and they had to do uh, uh, gingiva, for example? That's not easy to do. Well, they just change shade guides. And there you go, now they have gingiva. And then back again to the Vita Classic. So uh, that's all I'm gonna show you as far as how this program works. Uh, in summary, you know, we talked about a, a bunch of things. Uh, we talked about the importance of photography, just especially now it's more important than ever. We need to have an easy, easy camera to use, uh, one that's automated, and the point shoot cameras that used to be able to program, they're pretty much going away. So we talked about mobile photography. Uh, we talked about also the different photos that the lab needs, uh, and also uh, what the minimum requirements are. And we really appreciate all of you attending. And I'm gonna turn this over to Damon and see if he might have a few questions or thoughts. Um, so Damon, I'm gonna turn this over to you. Great, thank you, Dennis. And uh, very informative uh, as always. Uh, you're an expert in this area and um, I, I really like what you've developed. One of the, um, one of the questions that, um, that we, we always get about this is, um, the HIPAA compliancy as well. And right. I know you spoke a little bit about it, uh, but can you share that and, and the communication from this app to the lab, um, just what that kind of looks like? Yes, that's a great question. So the way we develop this is that even though you make the photos on your, on your, um, on your phone, the photos do not stay there. Okay, it actually, after you, cl you click on upload and it goes up into uh, uh, the technical term as a remote server or some of you know it as up in the cloud directly to the lab and it also goes to your account. And because the, uh, our app is password protected and that's what uh, HIPAA requires, you have to uh, password protect it because the photos do not stay on the phone and we do not include any patient name in the transfer of information back and forth, even though we sent an email. So that's the answer. So again, the photos do not stay on your, on your phone. Um, and I think that's really important. Uh, so it is HIPAA secure, it's encrypted and all that other stuff um, to our server. So that's how it works. So let me make one thing clear. Uh, with ShadeWave Mobile, you have a desktop version like this, and the lab has their database of your information. And uh, let me just say one more thing, and some of you may be thinking of this, wow, my photos are in this program. Can I get to them for my practice management software? And the answer is yes. I'm not gonna get into how during uh, right now, but you can easily download all the photos, okay? Okay, Great. David, thank you. Yeah, there's a box down there if anyone has any questions where it says Q&A. Um, you're, you're welcome to uh, type a question in that box. Um, you know, one of the other things that, um, that always comes up as well uh, with, with uh, ShadeWave is, um, you, you, you know, this, this app is, um, is rather recent. Yes, but yeah. you've had a long-term uh, success rate with ShadeWave before this app. And, um, you know, maybe you can talk about the, the accuracy you already had and yeah. just the difference there. Yeah. Well, I tell you, like anyone developing technology, it, you know, it doesn't just happen. And I'll tell you, we, we started about eight years ago, actually, with ShadeWave. And uh, I'll be first to admit, uh, I don't like, uh, I'll, I'll just say it this way, the way Edison said it, and that is, we found a lot of different ways not to make it, okay, um, along the way. But we're at a point now where we really have our formulas are very, very good. 
Um, and it, the program itself, uh, we know through a lot of testing, it works very, very well. And we just the, the real key and the real challenge is to make it work, we need decent photos. That's why I spent so much time on photography. But the program's uh, been around, it is patented, and we just know from experience in a lot of restorations, it works very, very well. And the app, the Shadeway Mobile, um, I started this four years ago. So we put a lot of R&D into it. The challenge we had back when we started, the cameras weren't so good. So we kept trying to make it better and better and it never made it until the cameras got better. And then we had all the programming done, et cetera. So, so even though it just came out, uh, it's been tested quite a bit. Okay. Another question. Um, can you go over again uh, the iPhones or what mobile devices are best to, to use for, yeah. for this? Yeah. I'll, I'll just say it verbally because I'm not sure exactly where that slide is. So I'll tell you what, what uh, we don't have, the iPads. We just decided that iPads were too bulky. Many of them do not have a flash. So this is just for the iPhone. And the models, the iPhone 8 and newer, just got a lot better. It will work, okay? It will work on the 7 and the 6, but the camera is not so good. So the iPhone 8 and newer, and the best ones are the one with two cameras. And there's a reason for that. I didn't say it earlier. And that is, it actually, the lens uh, cuts the uh, digital zoom in half. So we don't have, uh, we don't have as much digital zoom and the photo quality is just better in those phones. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, the other question, and I don't know, Jessica, if we have shared the, uh, the landing page there, but I know there might be more interest in, uh, in ShadeWave. Uh, and also the app there. Did we share that with everyone? We have not. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Dennis also mentioned several uh, handouts throughout the presentation, and we do promise that those will be coming post-webinar too. Okay, good. Great. Well, thank you. If there is any other question, um, uh, this webinar and I just want to uh, thank Dennis Bronson again uh, for going over and uh, being so thorough with this and we're very excited about it at DSG um, we see this as uh, this is, has been a challenge as of recently and um, we definitely can see the savings for the doctor um, not only on the patient's time uh, traveling to the lab uh, but also internally uh, with us as well with better communication. And I think it's a, it's a win all the way around with this app and uh, we're very excited. So uh, thank you, Dennis. And I'll turn it over to uh, Jessica and uh, we'll wrap it up. Thank you. And I did post up the um, landing page really quick in the, in the chat box in case you want to click on it and open another link before we shut this down. It is dentalservices.net backslash shade wave. And we do thank you for attending today. Thank if you, you have any other questions or concerns, feel free to email us at education at dentalservices.net. And we do look forward to seeing you again in future learning opportunities. Thank you for your participation and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.